you know guys that is I'm in Israel and on that side where you see the tower that is the border of Egypt that side is where you can see the tower is in Egypt and these are mountains a lot mountains a lot mountains on that side when you go down there it's a red canyon look at your blogger no I don't know what happen what's happening to her so uh, you know <laughs> this is the how was her trekking hiking here in Israel in Red Canyon yes. so you, see, you don't have to come so what you how was your experience how was your experience look at, look at my wow. Wow. Oh, yeah. And this lad was the lad of Edomites or Edomites, the descendants of Esau or Esau. Hi, guys, from the lad of Edomites, it's Veronica, and from here at uh, Elat Mountains we are going me and you that is <laughs> we are heading to the we are heading to Timna and Timna was one of the descendants or one of the daughters of Esau and uh, that is also the lad of uh, Edomites it was the lad of Edomites and we are going to visit Exodus 25, 40 to 40. And Exodus chapter 25, verse 8, it says that then have them make a sanctuary for me and I'll dwell among them. Verse 9, make this tabernacle and all its furnishings exactly like the pattern I will show you. So there are so many chapters in the Old Testament or the Tanakh, the Hebrew Bible, that talks about the tabernacle. Uh, that is from the book of Exodus through Leviticus, Numbers. And what was a tabernacle? It was a, a portable tent. So that is why uh, they used to call it all over until Joshua uh, constructed uh, the tabernacle that was in Shiloh. So today we are going to see the leprica of the tabernacle of Moses at the desert. So guys, uh, travel with me. It will be a long trip. From where I am, I think it's about one hour or so. But anyway, I'll not give you a road, uh, I'll not take you for a one hour road trip, so don't mind. <laughs> anyway guys, I love you so much and I thank you so much for your support. For them that have subscribed to my channel, I want to thank you so much. For them that are about to subscribe to my channel and are watching my videos, thank you so much. God bless you. Uh, let's do our Bible live. Yes, we visit places. We are going to be visiting places and then in Exodus chapter 20, 25 uh, through 35 to 40 you will find that in Hebrew the word tabernacle it means uh, it's called Mishkan Mishkan it's in Hebrew it's a portable sanctuary constructed by Moses as a place of worship for the Israelites during the period of wandering or Exodus to the promised land. So that is where we are going, guys. I love you so much from uh, the mountains of Elat. And uh, you know Elat, uh, it's, uh, it's in the Bible. For every place that you step to in Israel, it's written in the Bible. Elat, now it's written E-I-L-A-T. But in the Bible, it was written Elat or Alath. Uh, it's E-R-A-T-H 
it was in the Izion Geba. <laughs> Izion Geba. This one, I'll, I'll take a video one of these days about a large city and the Red Sea. But for now, we are visiting, uh, we are going to visit the lep, uh, replica of the Tabernacle of Moses. And it's, it's ex the exact size. Wow, we started our journey today from Tel Aviv at 2 a.m. <laughs> but now it's, uh, it's 8.15 and we have already hiked down there at the Red Canyon. I love you guys. Let me go and take my breakfast. I carried some chapatis for them that's no chapatis. <laughs> this is what I'm going to eat with my my black tea or we used to call it in Kenya true tea, true tea without uh, milk. <laughs> <laughs> Question. 
even I saw us, that I asked God about the situation or the problem. So here it is the answer of the Lord. Uh, God answered them, the Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb, and two peoples from within you will be separated. One people will be stronger than the other, and the older will serve the younger. So what it means? So God responded to the question of Isaac and Rebekah. So God responds to, to them that the older one will be the will become the servant while the younger one will be the superior one so i i know that you I, maybe you, you experience this with if you have a sisters within your certain ages it's not uh, far away from you <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs>
Wow. So guys, welcome to Timna Park. And we are going to to view or to visit a replica of the tabernacle of Moses exact size exact design everything that was in the tabernacle we are going to to see we have a special guide so guys enjoy wow most beautiful most beautiful park This is acacia, acacia tree. Remember the tabernacle of Moses. As we read about, about uh, the instructions that God gave to Moses. It was to be built with acacia, acacia wood. So this is acacia tree. So we're here. Okay. Uh, is it first time here? No, this is my uh, second time. Oh, but it's a close report. Yes, yes, yes. So it's a very close. Yes, yes. 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 Okay, I work here at the tabernacle. Uh, who was here at the tabernacle before? Everybody else first time? Yes! Really? Yes! Wow. Yeah, okay. Wow, it's the first time, so it's exciting. Uh, so what is the tabernacle? What is it? Or what was it? It's a tent of meeting. The tent of meeting, yeah, exactly. But what was it? What, what, what did they use it for? Offering. Okay. To, meet offering, to meet God, God. exactly. Yes. We can say that the tabernacle, or in Hebrew it's called Mishkan or Oil Moed, was the temple that the people of Israel had here in the desert, right, for 40 years. Uh, in Hebrew, it's called Mishkan. Okay, Mishkan comes with the word Lishkon, which means to dwell. Okay, do you mm. know the word Shekaina, Shekhina? Ken. It's all from the same word. Shekhina, Lishkon, Mishkan. Okay? okay. In, uh, God told Moses, build me this tabernacle so I can dwell with my people. Okay. In Hebrew, it's called Lishkon Betocham, to dwell inside the mm. people. Not with the people. I understand that most of you here are from Christian backgrounds. Yes. Yeah, yes. not everybody. Uh, I'm Messianic. Uh, Jewish, okay. so I'm Jewish, okay. born Jewish, but I believe in Jesus. Oh, yeah. hallelujah! So we have a lot to talk about. Okay, because this is not just something from the time of the desert from the book of Exodus. This is later on talking mm -hmm. about it in the New Testament and how Jesus is our our high priest, and this is just a shadow of the heavenly tabernacle. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Okay. So, when we say that, when God said that I want to dwell in my people, we all know what it means, right? Yeah. Okay. At that time, they didn't have the Holy Spirit in them. What, what did they have? The tabernacle, every time they stopped, was at the center, and all the 12 tribes around. Three tribes on each side of the tabernacle. Okay? But the first tribe here, the entrance, what tribe was here? Levi. Levi? No. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. The tribe of Judah. Judah. Oh. Judah, the Lion of Judah. We know that Jesus mm, came from the, the tribe Lion of, of Judah. 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 Yes. Okay. Now, uh, now there's only one way inside. Okay. I don't know if you can see in the picture, but this is the only way. Okay. Only one way. If somebody will try to go from the side, I know it looks easy to go from the side. Okay. But in the Bible times, if somebody would try to go from the side, God would kill him. Mm. Ah. Only the priest and Levites can go inside. Okay. Not the regular people. Only one way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and life. Nobody can go to the Father but through me. Everything that Jesus said, I am. I'm the way. 
I'm the bread of life. I'm the light. Everything we can see here in the tabernacle, and we will talk about it. Okay. At the Bible time, they made, they build everything in cubits. What is a cubit? It's from here to here, right? It, it changes from one person to another. The average cubit is 48 centimeters, and this is how we build this. So this is pretty much the original size of what was at the Bible. We see that they had a lot of treasure, gold, silver, and copper, and special skins and stones. Everything they took with them from Egypt. Okay? Just one example. Do you see the bases here? Mm -hmm. On the bottom? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were made out of pure copper. Mm -hmm. Each one about 33 kilos of pure copper. Mm -hmm. So only for the bases that go around the tabernacle, we're talking about close to two tons mm -hmm. of copper. Okay? Now we said that the copper and all the treasure they brought from where? From Egypt, yeah? Where did the Egyptians bring the copper from? Timna. Oh, the okay. copper here, right? Yeah. The Egyptians, they have their copper mines here at Timna. Okay. They took all the copper out. Actually, the time that uh, Egypt was here, taking all the copper out of the ground, is the same time that the people of Israel were in, it, were in Egypt. Yeah, because they were in Egypt for oh. 400 years. Oh. So probably most of the copper that they took out from here was the Israelites yes. as slaves and so they took they did all the work they took it to Egypt and then God said no 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 I'll take it back this belongs to Israel mm -hmm. okay so they took it back and this is how they built the tabernacle so like we said inside only the priests and Levites can go inside is there anybody here who's not a priest <coughs> or a Levite yeah, I'm a <laughs> all right well then let's go inside yeah. oh. <laughs> So if the last one can maybe close the door, it will help me very much. Okay. Okay. You know what? Why well, don't you come up? I'll go to the other side. This is the brazen altar. Ah. Let me pass here. Let me pass. Any come here. Now we'll have more than enough time later. You can go around, you can take pictures and videos and whatever you want. And later I will give you cards. If somebody's interested, I have cards with all the information about the tabernacle and how it connects to the New Testament and to Jesus. Okay, so everything I will say, don't worry, everything is written. The altar itself was made out of acacia wood. Okay? Covered with copper. Acacia tree? This is a acacia tree. That's a dead acacia tree, okay? Yes. But this one behind us, that's a green acacia tree. You see it? Mm -hmm. Okay? It's not very big. Okay? It's very crooked if you look at it. And it has very big thorns, spikes. It, it hurts very much when you come close to it. So this was made out of acacia wood and they covered it with copper. Okay, uh, so what would happen is when the people wanted to bring sacrifices, okay, well, where are the animals? Why didn't you bring any animals? <laughs> no animals. We don't need animals. We don't no, need no. the sacrifices anymore, right? Yeah. yeah. What, what's that? We came our sacrifice. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus was our last sacrifice. Okay. Actually, we, actually, we, we can see we can see something special is that Jesus. Uh, God actually made the first sacrifice in Garden of Eden, uh, of Eden right? Yeah. yeah. Right. He killed the animal to cover uh, the metaphorically to cover the sins of the people. Yeah. Now it would be easier for God to kill Adam and Eve. I know it sounds bad, but to kill Adam and Eve and start again, and then everything's perfect, right? But no, this shows the love that God has for the people yeah. from the beginning. So from the beginning, He killed an animal to cover them their nakedness, their sin, but he also finished it later with Jesus, where Jesus was the sin sacrifice. But the people here at the tabernacle, when they wanted to bring sacrifices, they'll bring the animal only to the entrance, and then the priest would take the animal, and then the priest would kill the animal and pour the blood on the horns and around, and then they would sacrifice the animal. Now, one of the sacrifices was a special sacrifice. It's called a sin sacrifice. You know why it's different than the rest of the sacrifices? Yeah? 
That was one of the sacrifices where nobody can eat from the meat. Okay, mm -hmm. the rest of the sacrifices they can eat. The sin sacrifice, they're not allowed to eat from the meat. But not just that, here at the altar, they only burn the fat and the kidneys of the animal. That's it. All the rest of the animal, the, 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 fat, uh, the fat, the skin, the bones, and the flesh, they burn it in a holy place far away from the people. Okay, outside the camp of the 12 tribes, there was a special place where there they burned the sin sacrifice. God said, I will take the sin out from my people outside and mm. it would die there. They would be burned there. Now, Jesus is our sin sacrifice. Where did he die? He didn't die inside Jerusalem. Yeah. He, died, he was crucified outside, outside. of Jerusalem. Yes. Just like here. Okay. Everything we see eventually points to Jesus. Here we have the wash basin. You see that? The labor. We'll, we'll, we'll get closer. We'll talk about it. This was for washing of the hands and the feet. Okay? Of the cleansing. Now they had to wash before they offer a sacrifice. So why isn't this here and the altar closer there? Why isn't it, why isn't it like that? Interesting, right? Yeah. So we know that Jesus is the only way. Okay? Yes. Now, after we know that, then we need to accept the sacrifice, the sacrifice of God. And uh, there are two things that he asked us to do. One is believe in him, to accept the sacrifice. And the second thing God asked us to do is what? Wash ourselves. Hmm. Purify ourselves. Get baptized. Yeah. Wash ourselves. The water itself doesn't cleanse us from our sins, but it is a testimony for the people around us to see that we chose uh, to follow Jesus. All right, so, let, so let's talk a little bit more about this. So the labor, it's, I think this is my favorite, my favorite thing in all of the tabernacle. <laughs> it's it's very different. Uh, you know why? What makes them different than the rest of the things we have here at the tabernacle? No? Did you read in the book of Exodus? Yeah, yeah. the instructions that God gave to Moses? Yeah. It's very confusing because there's a lot of details, a lot of small things and this and that and colors and rings and very, very interesting. When you read about this, it's one verse. We know almost nothing about it. Not the size, not the weight, not the shape, nothing. We know that it was made out of pure copper. That's it. Okay? This was actually made out of the mirrors of the women. Okay, back then they made mirrors out of copper. They took a copper sheet, sheet they, uh, they polished it and they used it as a mirror. So this was only made from the mirrors of the women. And this was full with water. In Hebrew, it's called Maim Chaim. What is Maim Chaim? Living water. Living water. Now, what is living water? Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Pure and simple. It's yeah. Jesus. It's written in Exodus. Maim Chaim. Wow. Now, we know that when God, when Jesus spoke to the Samaritan woman yeah. at the well, he said, if you would know who I am and you will ask me for water, yeah. I will bring you living water and you will become a spring of living water. So yeah. what is he talking about? Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Yeah. The salvation. Yeah. With the Holy Spirit, with the salvation comes the Holy Spirit. Now, God gave us the Holy Spirit. It's uh, it's like it's like an engagement ring. Okay. He says, "I will be back for my bride. I will be back for my church. I will come back and I will take you." That's a promise that God gave us to believers. Now He did this out of the love that He had for His people. Now, it's written in the Bible. You can't measure the love of God. There is no height. There is no depth. There is no length to the love of God. Just like here. You hmm. can't measure it. Ah. And it's always full. Wow. And it's enough for everybody. Everybody can come and everybody can take it. Now, when the priest came here and they came to wash themselves, okay, because they also had to wash in between sacrifices. So when they came here, they were full with blood on their hands and their feet and their clothes. Every time they came to take water, they could see their own reflection from the mirrors in the water. Mm. And they see that their white clothes are stained with blood. Mm -hmm. and, but only through the water that Jesus provides, they could cleanse themselves. And only then they could enter into the holy place and be with God. Amen? Mm. Okay.
Wow. So let's go to the side over here so we can see the building. Okay? Because that's that's also there's something important about it. So can everybody see the building? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So there's three areas at the tabernacle. There's the courtyard, then there is the holy, and then we have the hall of holies. To each area, somebody else is allowed to be inside. The holier we get, the more expensive the materials. So here, this is acacia wood covered with gold. Okay? And these were connected one to another like this. Just one to another, holding one another together. Okay? And what they had was the rings of gold and those rods there's a use so they can come mm -hmm. take yeah. it out yes. take it apart and move okay because remember yeah. they had to carry everything for 40 years in the desert yeah. okay it was not an easy job it was very very hard uh but they did it anyway yeah. okay out of obedience to god I mean, yeah. so this is the actual building the covering had four different layers okay we can see the layers on the inside the first layer Okay, it had four colors, white, red, purple, and blue. Okay, we'll see and we can talk about it inside. And over it, there was a goat's fur and then two layers of skin over it that made the wings of the tent just like this. Mm. Okay, you guys ready to go inside? Yep. Yeah. All right, let's yep. go inside. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> So if you see, you can see the colors on the top, the white, the red, the purple, and the blue. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And if you want, some people can come in here so there will be more space. Okay. And later we'll have more than enough time to go around and take pictures and everything. So this area, it's called Hakodesh, the holy. Here, only the priest can be inside, not, not the Levites, and of course not the regular people. And behind this veil is the Hall of Holies. They're only the high priest, and only on? Once a year. Yeah, yeah, only on Yom Kippur, only one day a year. That's it. Okay? Now here, I don't know if you can see it, it's a little small. We have the menorah. Okay, the lampstand, the menorah. You see it? Yes. Okay. This was made out of pure gold. It was one piece of gold. It was hammered gold. You know what I mean, hammered gold? Now, they took one, one big chunk of gold, about 70 kilos of gold, and with hammers, they slowly shaped it to the way it was, okay? They didn't melt it and pour it, but slowly shaped it with hammers until it got to this. And there were seven lamps, and every day the priest had to put oil inside, morning and evening. Okay? Because this was always lit, all the time. It was always, always burning. But this was the only light we have here. There's no other light. Okay, the veil was closed very well. This is the only light. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. I'm the only light of the world. Do you remember the tree we saw outside? The acacia tree, the crooked tree, the yes, small yes. tree? Okay. Do you know what it takes to take that tree and to make something like this? You have to cut it, you have to clean it, you have to take all the thorns and glue it together and attach everything. God said, this, the tree actually represents us. God said, if you will bring yourself to me, oh. I will take you, I will shape you the way I want you to be, mm. and I will cover you in righteousness. Yeah. Amen. Even though this is the only light in here, if we give ourselves to God, he will cover us in righteousness, which is gold means righteousness. And we will shine the light of the world. We will shine the light of Jesus to the rest of the world. Mm. So this was the only light, yes. But because of the whole building is made out of gold, covered with gold, the light was shining everywhere. There is no shadow in here because it jumped at the north side. I don't know if you can see. Yeah. We have the, the showbread table. Okay, there are 12 breads, one representing each tribe. But this was holy bread. Only the priest could eat from the bread. Okay, they had to make it fresh every Sunday, but eat it only on Shabbat, only on Saturday. So for a whole week, the bread was just sitting here. Okay, but, but it said it was a miracle. It stayed fresh the whole time. 
Wow. Now one question, who ate from the bread that was not a priest in the Bible? You know? Who ate from the bread that was not a priest? David. David, who said David? David, exactly. King crazy. David. With how many people was, were with him? His, uh, army? I don't know. With his army, yeah. Okay, you remember when uh, David ran away in the desert from Saul and he, were, he went into the cave, the Adulam cave? Yeah. So it was David with his 400 men. 400 men. Uh, it was a small army. The men in the beginning, they were not good people. They were murderers. They were thieves. Uh, but God used them. Yeah. David went to the high priest at that time, and he told him, me and my men are hungry. We need food. We need something. And the high priest told him, I only have the holy bread that is meant for the priest. But he gave it to him. Okay? He gave it to David. Now, David was not a priest. Okay? He's not from the tribe of Levi. He's from the tribe of Judah. Judah. Now, we know that Jesus is the descendant of David. Mm. What would happen if God would kill David for eating the, the bread? <laughs> exactly. No, yeah. Jesus. Now, what's interesting is that how many breads did the high priest give David? Do you know? Five. Now, there are only 12 breads. Even the 12 breads is not enough for 400 men. But he gave him five breads for David and his 400 men. Now, David writes in Psalm about the Messiah to come. Okay? And he tells him how much bigger the Messiah is going to be and how much... You know, King David is a big king. It's, it's one of the biggest kings in the history of the world. Everybody knows King David. But how much, Jesus, how much bigger is Jesus himself when he did the same thing? To five bread, just like... Yeah. Ah, to okay? feed 5,000 To feed 5,000 people. Not uh -huh. 400, 5,000. How much bigger is Jesus than that? Mm -hmm. And he said, I am the bread of life. Mm -hmm. Okay. And also in the Last Supper, that's why he told them, told them, take this bread. This represents my body that was broken, broken. for you. For you. Okay. Right. And just like Jesus basically died right before Shabbat, they only ate this on Shabbat, on the day that he was actually uh -huh. broken. Wow. And same thing here with the menorah. When Jesus said, I am the I light of the world, the yeah. Jesus was actually hammered to the cross, just like they made this. Only when he died, people understood, wow, he is the Messiah. What have we done? Yeah. So everything here eventually points to Jesus. Everything. Mm -hmm. Wow. Amen. The altar here, the gold, the golden altar. This was not for sacrifices. Okay, this was uh, for incense. Okay, do you, do you know incense? Burning. Yeah, it's for burning incense. It's for burnt offering. Uh, here every day in the morning and in the evening, they had to put uh, a whole handful of incense, and it went up in smoke. And this represents. Uh, it says that this is the prayers of the people every day, morning and evening. They had to offer it to prayers. The blood that they put on the horns were all, was only the blood of the sacrifice of Yom Kippur. Okay, do you know Yom Kippur? Mm -hmm. Day of Atonement? Day of Atonement. Yeah, Day of Atonement. It's a very, very special day. Uh, the, the most special day, also today in Israel, the most special day uh, in, in Israel. Uh, but this was the, actually the job of the high priest. Okay. The high priest, there was only one at one time. Okay, the regular priests and the Levites, they served until the age of 40, and then they passed on the job to their sons. The high priest, he served God until the day he died. No vacations, no Shabbat. Every day the high priest was here. And he had special clothes as well. The regular priest had only the white. Okay, so you can see how easy the blood can make it dirty. Um, yeah, but that's he had the blue over it, where on the bottom he had bells and pomegranates all the way around. So everywhere he walked, people will know that they're in the presence of the high priest. He had the ephod, the breastplate with the 12 stones. One represents each tribe with the name of the tribe. And this, he keeps it close to his heart. And he had two more stones on his shoulders. Also, with the names of the 12 tribes. From the oldest all the way to Benjamin, the youngest. This represents the responsibility the high priest had for the people, for the 12 tribes. Okay? Because in Yom Kippur, the of Atonement, the high priest would sacrifice an animal, a goat, 
for the sins of the people. Before he did this, he had to offer a sacrifice for his own sin, to cleanse himself, and then offer a goat for the sins of the people. And with this blood, he came in here, and he poured it on the altar, and he poured it on the veil, and then he walked into the Hall of Holies to the presence of God. This is something that he had to do year after year after year. In the book of Hebrews chapter 4, it's talking about Jesus. It's comparing Jesus to the high priest. It says Amen. Jesus is now our high priest. Yes. We don't need a high priest anymore. Yes. Why? Because the difference between the regular high priest and Jesus, it's in a way it's similar, but it's different. Jesus didn't have to offer a sacrifice for his own sin because he was perfect. Mm -hmm. He offered himself as a sin sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And that was enough for eternity, for everyone. Mm -hmm. Here this was only for the 12 tribes, only once a year. Yeah. Okay, and every year, again and again, it's written, the blood of goats and rams cannot forgive sin. Yeah. Okay, I, I, it doesn't mean that back then it didn't forgive their sins. It did. Yeah. Okay, but we don't need it anymore today. We don't need that blood. We don't need more blood coming out. Mm -hmm. Now, we know that we're close to Jesus' heart. That's why he sacrificed himself. He walked willingly to the cross. Mm -hmm. When he walked to the cross, he took our responsibility. He carried his own cross on his shoulder. Mm -hmm. Our cross. That was our responsibility. He took the his. Amen. Now, on Yom Kippur, when the high priest came here, he wore only the white. No gold. No crown of gold or precious stones or golden bells. Only humble with the one piece of rope from top to bottom. When Jesus came here, people thought that the Messiah is going to save them from the Romans. Hmm. To free them and to, and to rule Israel and to rule the world. But no, he didn't. He didn't come as a, gold, he didn't come as a king with gold and precious stones. Yeah. He walked to the cross as a lamb with one piece of rope from top to bottom. Just like a high priest did here. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Well, let's talk a little bit what's inside. Okay. You told uh, obviously, <laughs> only the high priest went inside, so there's only place for one person in a way. Okay. Uh, we're a little bit more. But inside, we have the Ark of the Covenant. I'll, I'm going to show you real quick, and then I'm going to close it, and later we can go inside and look. Okay. But do you see the Ark? Yeah. Okay. So the Ark itself. They're made out of two different things. You have the cherubims, the angels on the top, and you have the ark on the bottom. The cherubims, we don't know exactly what they look like. It does, it, it's not written in the Bible. We don't know their size or what their faces look like. We know they were made out of pure gold, one piece of gold, and the bottom was acacia wood covered with gold. Okay? All right, I'm going to close it real quick, and we'll talk a little bit more about it, okay? Okay. One moment. Okay. Later we can go inside, don't worry about it. it. When the high priest walked inside, he walked in with the blood, right? And with the blood with his fingers, he sprinkled seven times on top of the ark. Okay. And then he walked back outside. What was inside the ark? The tablet stones? The rod of Aaron. The rod of Aaron, the high priest. And the mana. And mana. Okay, mana. These are the uh, three things that God made covenants with three people. One of them is the manna. God promised them that he will provide them when he takes them out of Egypt. And he will bring them to the land. And look where we are today. Yeah. It was right. The Ten Commandments. What are the Ten Commandments? The law, of God. the law of God. By the law, we are judged. The law tells us what to do. Yes or no? Before the law, yes. okay, yeah. like Abraham, Abraham was justified by his faith. Yeah. Amen. Okay? But the law tells us physically... Uh, if we're right or wrong, if we sin or not. Can somebody here keep the law? No. No, no of course not. Why? Because we're not perfect. Jesus is. Jesus came and he said, I didn't come to cancel the law. I came to fulfill it. Amen. So through me, you can be perfect in a way and enter and be with the Father. Because sin is what separates God from people. Yeah. Sin is Amen. what separates it. So that, that's why the high priest was here. He was here to offer the sins of the people to God. But now that we don't have a high priest, we don't have a temple, we don't have the ark, we can go directly to God. Hallelujah. Okay. 
So when the high priest, he actually sprinkled the blood on the ark, and when the cherubims, they're looking down onto the ark, it shows that we are no longer under the law. Mm. We're no longer, you know, the, the, the Old Testament, the Old Covenant, mm. but we are under the blood of the sacrifice, the blood of Jesus. Mm. He was the last perfect sin sacrifice. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That's Praise amazing. the Lord. Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. Now, in the, uh, in the second temple in Jerusalem, the ark was gone. There was no ark. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, after the destruction of the first temple, the ark was gone. Nobody knows where it is. Yeah. And I'll be honest, uh, and it hurts some people when I say it, but the ark of the covenant was not holy. Mm -hmm. Why am I saying this? Mm -hmm. The ark is made by man. By a man. His name is Bezalel. It's man-made. It was not holy. God, the presence of God is what made the ark holy. Amen. Yeah. God Amen. said that he will talk to the priest from between the cherubims and the ark. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, like God talk, talked to Moses in the burning bush. Mm -hmm. He said, take your shoes off because the ground is holy. It's not that the ground is holy. It's the presence of it's God presence. is holy. Yeah. See, at that time, they took the ark with them to war thinking, hey, We'll win the war. Let's take God. Let's put him in our pocket. Let's do whatever we want with him. That's not the way it works. God is a holy God. You can't twist things. So what happened? They stole the ark. They lost the war and they stole the ark. Yeah. Because the ark itself is not holy. Even the Samaritan woman at the well, she understood. And she saw Jesus and she said, I see that you're a prophet. So tell me this. You say you need to pray in Jerusalem. But we Samaritans say we need to pray in this mountain. Where do you need to pray? He yeah. said it's not here and it's not there. It's in spirit, it's spirit and in, in truth. truth. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why we don't need the ark. That's why there was no ark at the second temple. Mm. But in the Jewish tradition, when somebody, when a father loses his son, he tears his robes he, out of mourning. He rips it. What happened when Jesus died on the cross? He tore the veil. Was torn. Was ripped from top to bottom. Amen. This showed that God, the Father, was sad for the loss of the Son. Jesus cried, "My Father, My Father, why have you forsaken me?" Eli, Eli, lama azaftani. But it didn't just show that. It shows that now we have free access. Mm -hmm. Nothing separates us from Amen. God. And we don't need a high priest anymore because yeah. we have Jesus. Amen. We don't need the Ark of the Covenant because we have Jesus. Amen. We are free to go to the Father the way we are. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Yeah. All right. So, let's walk inside <laughs> and take a look. Oh, the cherubim. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Cherubim. Had two wings. You got to do this real quick. Does somebody have any questions? Does somebody have any questions? What is in the bowl? What? What is in the bowl? It represents mana. We don't know exactly what mana ah, is or what okay. it looks like. So, but we have to put something. I put something with a but it's not said. Yes. This is the example. What's that? Is that? It's a replica. No. no it's a replica. No. Here in Tina, where we're sitting, this is not the place where the tabernacle was. The tabernacle was 10 minutes away from here. It was in Enevrona. It's on the way to Elat. Yes. It's one of the places that's written in the Bible that the tabernacle was. Uh, do you know how many people came out of Egypt? Of course, it's millions of Israelites. Yes. Uh, 600,000 men alone with women and children. We're talking about between 2 to 5 million people came out of Egypt. Now, if they have to be organized by tribes around the tabernacle, the place has to be huge and flat. 
So what? So in Avrona, 10 minutes from here, it's one of the places where they camp. And if you see the land, it's huge and it's flat. And one more thing, there's a water well there. Oh. A real water well, natural well today, which is probably one of the places that they, they had to bring the water. Uh, so that's one of the places they've been with the tabernacle. So we're very, very close, uh, but we're not there. <laughs> exactly. Good. We're not, a, we're nothing man made can be there. So, mm. unfortunately. Yeah. But uh, people visit? Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. What is the name of that place? Ain Evrona. Ain Evrona. That is where the tabernacle Yeah. Ah, so this yeah. is just. Uh, yeah. So, cherubins. Representing mana. The broken tablet that Moses broke. And the rod of Aaron that we are inside the Ark of the Covenant. Wow, that was uh, amazing. You see, guys, that it was called a tent of, of meeting. So it was portable, as you can see. And they colored it with them. All the journey, throughout the journey of Exodus, until they built a permanent place for it at Shiloh. I edited, uh, the other day I uploaded a video about Shiloh. So by the end of this video, I'll put it by the end so that you can watch it if you haven't watched it. And if you have watched it, then there are some people that have been asking me what is a tabernacle. So today, I brought you to this place and you had a good gu guide that is messianic Jew so the explanation was wonderful wow guys today I've learned too much too much I never knew about some of the things that the the guide was talking about the tabernacle it's a little it's Tabernacle really represented it represented the picture of Jesus Christ and Coming here. I feel good and I feel Wow <laughs> Yeah, this is one of the things that Revive my spirit and I hope that also you you feel the same so guys I'm so excited and I thank you so much for your love from Timna Park. Timna was one of the uh, one of the descendants of Esso. So from Timna, <laughs> I thank you so much, and I will see you again in a few days' time. Thank you. By the way, what's your name? You didn't tell us your name. Yeah, I did. You did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, Malcolm. Yes, Malcolm. Yes, Malcolm. Yeah. Wow, thank yeah. you so much. Yes, you that was You know, I'm I'm so I'm so excited your explanation. Your explanation because you are messianic. It's it's hit me, you know? I thought you know sometimes I think that I know I know the Bible, but wow, then you explain it too much that yeah. Well, I feel, God. you know, it's, it's, it's all it's all from God. It's very good. Yes, and that's why I think uh, uh, anytime you read the Bible, it's yeah. new every yeah. time. Yes. So yes. I've all learned too much. And yes. Also me, I'm, I'm learning every, every day, day. Yes. Something new. Yes. Uh, also here. <laughs> ah, every time also here. <laughs> you need something new. Yes. It's amazing. It never ends. Yes, we thank God. Yeah. So thank you so much. You're welcome. Yes. Yeah. yeah. yeah.
Each other we're crooked. But if you see the building, how nice and pure and clean it is, this is what happens when God takes us from this and makes us like this and covers us with righteousness. Wow, amen. You explained very well. Thank yes. you so much. Yes. Thank, Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Nice to I think uh, that is that was one of the best tour guides that I've ever met in Israel. <laughs> wow. I love you guys. Thank you so much. You see all this place is full of acacia. Acacia trees are all over. Timna too is a it was the land of the Edomites. Yes. You can see the the mountains are red. So <laughs> thank you so much guys. I appreciate your support. I appreciate your blessings. And uh, God bless you so much. And I will see you again in a few days time from Team Napak. Yes, it's Veronica. <laughs> ah, look, the stones, the locks are red. Even the soil. It's uh, breathtaking. 